Welcome back to Latitudes and Attitudes. Now we're off to Southern California to review a great new cruising boat from our friends at Compact Yachts. Time now for a Latitudes and Attitudes look at a new cruising boat. Our review of the Compact 35 took place on a beautiful winter day in San Diego, California. California Yacht Sales on Harbor Island was our host for the day as we got to know this good-looking, Charlie Morgan-designed Blue Water Sailor a little better. Many of you know Compact Yachts for their high-quality trailerables and catboats. Now you are going to find out what makes this 35-footer such a great cruiser. It all starts with construction and attention to detail. Owners Rich and Jerry Hutchins put their name on every boat that leaves the Compact Yard, making sure each and every build meets the highest standards. From the dual anchor rollers on the bowsprit to the external chain plates and the rest of the on-deck details, you can see a great deal of thought and care went into this design. And yes, I love the fact that there is exterior teak, just enough for that timeless, elegant look. You'll find the same feeling when stepping down below. The warm hand-rubbed teak interior creates a cozy environment, yet the main cabin feels more spacious than you'd expect in 35 feet. Walking through the boat from the galley, past the nav station, built-in starboard seats, and the port settee, you enter the forward cabin. A large fee berth, dressing seat, hanging locker, and storage cabinet reside under two opening port lights and an overhead hatch. The white bulkhead provides even more brightness. Back in the main cabin, the starboard layout can also be a full-length settee or two swivel chairs. In each case, the rear-facing nav area features a large desktop surface with good storage underneath. Instruments are conveniently mounted next to the electrical panel, with Compact's expertly organized wiring just as easy to get to. Other standard features include a stereo with 10-disc CD changer and a DVD player with a TV monitor. To port is a full-length settee and the bulkhead-mounted dining table. With the table down, you have access to storage cabinet. With the table up, you have a whole lot of space to move around. The settee also does double duty as a double berth. Just aft is the galley. With a close to centerline sink and plenty of convertible counter space, this L-shaped galley is quite functional at sea or on the hook. With an icebox standard, this boat had the optional refrigeration. Other standard features include a gimbaled stove and oven, good storage space, and a microwave. Just aft of the nav station to starboard, at the base of the companionway, is the boat's single head. The shower and separate head area are large enough even for me. An opening port light and overhead hatch provide plenty of ventilation. Just aft of the galley is the guest cabin which has stand-up headroom inside the door, a true sea berth, hanging locker, and an opening port light and overhead hatch. Other notable features include handy 120 and 12 volt outlets, more storage in every nook and cranny, well-positioned stainless grab rails, excellent lighting and ventilation, and attention to detail that is unmistakable compact quality. After lunch, we decided it was time to take her out for a little ride on the Pacific Ocean. The swell was running strong enough to showcase the 35's ability to track straight and true. Her shield keel and 46% ballast to weight ratio makes for a stiff, sea kindly ride in any conditions. Beyond that, she just looks great and right at home cruising the ocean. In fact, a few Compact 35s have competed successfully in the Marion Bermuda Race and the Caribbean 1500. This is a comfortable, powerful cruising yacht built with major attention to strength and safety. Later in the afternoon, we went back into San Diego Bay to climb aboard and see how she handled in the lighter airs of the protected harbor. Wandering around on deck, we were impressed with the overall design and quality of materials Compact uses. Everywhere you turn, the fact that these boats are built on a semi-custom basis is quite evident. From the robust bowsprit to the double lifelines and wide side decks, you can tell this is one solid cruiser. With Ian and Jerry enjoying the evening sail, we were pleasantly surprised at the 35's performance and maneuverability. 
But then again, with the 35's moderate displacement and long waterline, we should have expected nothing less from our friends at Compact Yachts. To get more information on this exceptional 35-foot cruising yacht and the rest of the Compact line, just go to compactyachts.com. That's C-O-M hyphen P-A-C yachts.com. Mm, there's nothing quite like a beautiful boat out on the ocean. Now, let's see what kind of attitude Mr. Bitchin has. Life didn't get much better. We were about 300 miles from entering the Mediterranean Sea. As this would be the first time I sailed into this legendary berth of sailing, I was about as giddy as a teenage boy on his first date with Britney Spears. We'd sailed directly from Antigua to the Azores, and then we got hit by a blow in Horta and had to hold up for about a week. We left the islands, sailing at a fair clip with the wind about 120 degrees off our stern. All of a sudden, the wind shifted in a gust a little past the 180 degree mark. I hollered jibe at no one in particular and ducked. Even though our boom is eight feet off the deck, it is still an eerie feeling having a few hundred pounds of aluminum swishing over your head. And then I watched as, in slow motion, the sheet line dipped down from the boom, grabbed the cute little mushroom thingy that sat atop our pilot house, and popped it into the sea like a giant kicking a toadstool. That cute little mushroom thingy was our GPS antenna. So up comes our handy dandy sextant. To make a long story short, the ten years since I'd taken a sight had melted the old memory a bit. It was well after noon the next day when we got our position, as all I could remember was how to take a noon sight. I remember the feeling as we finally entered the Strait of Gibraltar and I first sighted that venerable rock. In the world we live in, we are so protected it is very seldom we can achieve the feeling of self-worth that can only be found after conquering a difficult situation. One where, even for a split second, you feel the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. And that, my friends, is why we go out there for that split second when you can know that feeling of overcoming adversity. Thanks, Bob. Well, that brings this week's show to a close. We'll have more exciting Middle Eastern cruising stories with the Abbots in future episodes. I'm Susanna Prokoska. Thank you for watching Latitudes and Attitudes. And remember, don't dream your life, live your dream. Latitudes and Attitudes is brought to you by Seafaring.com, the Internet's marketplace for the cruising sailor or trawler owner. Promotional considerations provided by Noble House Hotels. When in Redondo Beach, guests stay at the Portofino Hotel and Yacht Club. When in Newport, Rhode Island, the Hotel Viking. And when in Key West, the beautiful Ocean Key Resort. And by Pelican Products, manufacturer of the world's finest waterproof cases, used by cruising sailors worldwide. What I'm looking forward to is uh, seeing all the places that I really can't get to on vacations and meeting the people and getting into the lifestyle of the locals for an extended period of time other than the week that you normally have off. Work through the boat project list and at some point we're just going to have to cut it off, untie the dock lines and go. I cannot recommend decadence as a way of life, but it has worked for me.